Prime Minister and Finance Minister Anwar Ibrahim has announced budget 2024. Hey guys, it's Aisha, your investing friend. You can skip to the following timestamps for the section that you want to watch. Here's how budget 2024 will impact you. Number one, there's no GST, but service tax in SST will increase from 6 to 8%. Ho Chai, luckily, FMB and telecommunication service will not see increase in SST. And I really thought PM Anwar will announce GST this round, but seems like he still think that it's not the right timing. Anyway, things will become more expensive. Number two, chicken and eggs price will increase because our government has removed the price ceiling for popokai and eggs. So our top fund auntie will definitely take this opportunity to increase price. Number three, sugar price will increase from 40 cents to 50 cents per litre. Last time, sub fund plus tepen is the best combo. Now, I can only afford Maggi goreng and tap water. Some more cannot simply simply tambah telur mata already because very expensive. Number 4, there's now a 5 to 10% luxury tax for high value items. This week, maybe your 10,000 ringgit bag will become 11,000 ringgit. So, for those who fancy a lot about Gucci, la, LV, la, Rolex, la, mm, you can now. But now, government still haven't announced on the threshold yet. And not just handbag are ah, all luxury items, watches la, jewelries la. So my Malay friends, Akka and Abang, I know y'all love to save money to buy gold, right? You might need to pay more soon if you buy over a certain amount. By the way, this luxury tax will not impose on foreigners. Only Malaysian will get ah. So tourism sector will not be impacted lo. Number five, electricity subsidy will mostly continue. Since this year, our government has started to lift subsidy for the highest 10% electricity consumption and the remaining 90% electricity consumption will still be subsidized. PM Anna also said that they will continue to improve the approach for targeted subsidy. So please remember to switch off your aircon and lights when not in use. Number 6. Petrol subsidy will continue but not for diesel. Our government didn't mention a dot row 95 petrol subsidy at all in budget 2024. But if you use diesel, government will slowly increase the price of diesel in stages. Most of our subsidized diesel is stolen to other countries because our petrol and diesel prices is very low compared to our neighboring countries. Number 7. Clean and usable toilets. We all know how bad our Malaysian toilets are. La. And Anwar said repair work for the toilet in all 8,354 schools will be completed this year. So if your school toilet is still broken, kindly comment below. And 150 million ringgit will be allocated in 2024 to repair public toilet in Malaysia. Eight 2,400 ringgit rebate if you buy electric motor. But this is only applicable if your annual income is less than 120,000 ringgit. You can also get income tax relief of up to 2,500 ringgit for EV charging facilities up to 4 years. Time to change car and motor. The 9-10% discount on PTA PTA loan from 14th of October 2023 to 31st of March 2024. If you fully settle or at least settle 50% in one single payment, and 15% discount if you pay by salary deduction. Number 10. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim just made a huge mistake in introducing this flexible EPF account in budget 2024. Once EPF account tree is introduced, EPF members can access account tree at any time with no restriction. We all know that Malaysians have a big retirement problem. 81% of our EPF members don't have enough money to retire. Now that account 3 can be withdrawn anytime, many people will move their money from account 1 and 2 to this flexible account, which EPF say it is possible. I know this is to encourage more Malaysians that are working in the gig economy like food panda drivers, grab drivers or businessmen to open account because now only 60% of working Malaysians have an EPF account but many other EPF members will take advantage of this to withdraw their money from EPF account I don't know if it is 
a really good idea. I still hope that they don't allow people working in the formal sector to open this flexible EPF account easily. Or, or even if they allow, maybe just allow less than 10% withdrawal from account 2 to this flexible account. By the way, if you like my sharing, please like, share and follow, okay? This will help me a lot. So how budget 2024 will impact our economy? In ETR and NIMB 2030, these two plans have a very simple goal. And ETR aims to attract foreign direct investment. NIMB 2030 aims to encourage domestic direct investment after FDI comes in. And goal is to develop high growth, high value industries in Malaysia and improve Malaysian's income. Budget 2024 is very important so that we can see where money is flowing into. Number one, PIPC has been selected to turn into a development hub for the chemical and petrochemical sector. Government will give special tax rates or investment tax allowance to support companies that. Number two, Korea North Para has been selected to be the next new high-tech industrial area in the e and &E sector. This is the third high-tech industrial park in Malaysia after buying Lepas Pinang and Kulim Kega. With this, the whole North Malaysia will have a complete supply chain for e and &E and become the Silicon Valley in Malaysia. The 3 billions prepared for startup founders to start the next big thing in these few industries. Number 4. Investment to become leader of global Islamic economy. Malaysia has a very great potential. This is a low-hanging fruit and Malaysia should have been more aggressive in Islamic economy. We used to be the top leader but now other Islamic economy has caught up to us. Here are the initiatives to push Malaysia back to the later position. Number 5, over 50 billion ringgit of initiatives to help middle, small and micro entrepreneurs. If you are a tauke, now it is the time for you to take advantage of these initiatives. Number 6, billions to turn Malaysians into high skilled workers. I think we all know that Malaysia education sector is not very good. This is also why our salary is so low, mainly because what we learn in our school is not what our employers want. So government has allocated billions and many incentives to upgrade our workforce, especially on TBT education and training. Number 7, visit Malaysia year to boost tourism. Tourism is a very very important source of income but it is not promoted properly. Don't forget that tourism is also the main source of our ringgit strength. Next, how budget 2024 will impact investors? First thing first, no capital gain tax for listed shares. Only unlisted shares will have 10% capital gain tax. But there are still very limited info on how they are going to implement this. Like how to calculate the capital gain of Is it I set up this company for 10,000 ringgit and then I sell it off 10 years later for 100,000 ringgit? Then I need to pay 10% on the 90,000 ringgit gain? What if when I sell, but I receive it in land or shares? Still need to pay capital gain tax in cash? All details are needed on this to provide clarity or else it doesn't seem like a good policy and might deter M&A activities in the private sector. Next, I will also share companies that will benefit from budget 2024. Companies that will benefit from the removal of price ceiling of popokai and eggs. The subsidy for diesel will increase transportation costs for logistic companies or even companies that have centralized hub with local supply chain. Revival of big projects like LRT3 and Pinning LRT. Second chance policy that will allow bankrupt Malaysians aged below 40 with debts not exceeding 200,000 ringgit to be discharged. This will benefit companies that provide loans to Malaysians with bad credit profile. Because the discharge of these bankrupts will increase the total addressable market for these companies. Our government is also very gung-ho about digitalizing the government sector and the national digital identity system will be restarted after delay. Our government has also allocated 150 million ringgit to maintain street lights and replace them with LED. 50 million ringgit to upgrade existing 30 traffic lights to smart traffic light system. 
Allocation to Sabah and Sarawak has also increased a lot. There are also many big projects like Sarawak Sabah Link Road and Pan Borneo Sabah Highways projects totaling 23 billion ringgit. So some companies in Sabah and Sarawak for you to focus on are digitalization of government and MSMEs will also bring new wave of spending in upgrading ICT infrastructure. This will benefit companies that distribute this software and hardware. Companies that have business in Korean Perak, the third high-tech industrial park for E&E &E in Malaysia. My thoughts on budget 2024. To be very honest to you, it's not very impressing. Because we all know what problems Malaysians are facing. Number one, we spend more than we earn. Number two, we are stuck in the middle income trap. Number three, we have huge retirement problem. So the way forward is to focus on increasing growth while cutting costs. But this is a very very hard game to play and require our leader to take huge and bold steps. But in budget 2024, all we see is baby steps. Anyway, let's talk about what I like about Budget 2024. Number 1, NIMP and NDTR are great plan to push Malaysia forward. To solve our middle income trap problems, Malaysia needs to grow faster than our expenditure. And NIMP and NDTR can help to do that by aligning our country into global supply chain and improve Malaysia's productivity. Indirectly, it will also help to increase Malaysia's tax income. Good. Number 2, Allocation for Education Ministry has increased. NIMP and NETR will push Malaysia forward into a new economy with focus on technology. But Malaysian workers are not ready to take on this high skill job yet. Hopefully, our education and HR minister can utilize this money properly and steer our country into the right direction, creating the right environment for world class training and learning. Because with the right people, Malaysia can move forward. Now let's talk about what I don't like about budget 2024. Number one, there's no real reform in petrol subsidy. Prime Minister Anwar is just scratching the surface by stopping subsidy for diesel, which helped to save roughly 4.5 billion ringgit. Remember our total subsidy in 2023 is 81 billion ringgit. Minister Rafizi said that our government is developing the central database hub system to calculate targeted fuel subsidy for everyone and it will only be ready in the first quarter of 2024. But time is ticking. We don't have much time left. Number two, no GST introduced. GST is a better tax collection system than SST. Even after increasing servicing tax in SST, I doubt it would be better than implementing GST. Because the GST can reduce tax leakage and corruption significantly, every year GST will bring in 25 billion ringgit extra revenue to the government. And most of our neighboring countries have been implementing GST since 1990s, so there's no reason why we cannot. Number three, worsening retirement problem. The introduction of EPF account really need to be implemented very carefully to avoid another round of mass withdrawal. We cannot afford that anymore. Some of that's, that's very bad for other EPF members than me. Number four, what he say is not what he do. PM Anwar still cannot run away from Malaysian politician bad habit giving handouts. Civil servants and pensioners will get 1,000 to 2,000 and get cash handouts. Our country is now in deficit, meaning these cash and outs are given using borrowed money. Is this a sustainable way moving forward? Anyway, these are my thoughts for budget 2024. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section.